I work with the firm called Varsity Student Institute, and our job is to work with students and help them through the college selection and application process. And so we've got a couple students, Harsa and Eric, you're both juniors, so good timing to get started in this. I myself is, am a graduate of the United States Air Force Academy. I took a different route. I enlisted in the Air Force right out of high school, grew up in Florida. They sent me to an Air Force base in Alaska. From there, I, I grew up, I learned that I wanted to be an officer. I applied to the academy, they sent me to the prep school. And uh, after a year, they sent me to the academy and I then um, uh, spent about seven years on active duty as a special agent in the Air Force, kind of like the Air Force's FBI. And uh, then left active duty in 1999 and moved out here to the Northwest. I live on Bainbridge Island. Uh, where I've raised my three kids who all went to Bainbridge High School. And uh, my full-time job, I spend managing money for very wealthy people. And, and I've been working with VSI for six years, working mostly with students interested in the academies and ROTC. So over that course of time, I spent, uh, when I left active duty, I spent uh, 12 years in the reserves and uh, and spent time working with uh, a number of different congressional uh, representatives. Governor Inslee, I served on his panel, congressional nomination panel for six years and uh, Senate, uh, Congresswoman Del Bene, I chaired her panel. Congressman Kilmer, I've chaired his panel. I sat on both Senator Cantwell and Senator Murray's panels. So that's a little bit of background for me. I've seen a, a couple more people join. Um, uh, Connor, let me ask you, what, what school do you go to and what year of a student are you? Connor Roan, there you yes. go. Yes, uh, I, go, <laughs> I go to Running Start at Bellevue College and I'm a junior in high school. What high school? I'm at Bellevue High School. Great, all right, wonderful. And I don't know if you go by Theodore, but Theodore Morris, what about you? Yeah, I go to Bellevue High School and I'm a junior. All right, a whole group of juniors here, wonderful. Well, thanks for joining. I've worked with uh, students from all of your high schools that, that are on the call here. And so it's nice to, uh, nice to chat. So uh, let me start by sharing my screen and then I'll get into the presentation. This is gonna be super informal. So if you have specific questions, feel free to ask me, okay? Uh, and we'll stop and we'll We'll go from there, but uh, let me let me view this thing so you can all see it. Can you all see that? OK, I hope you can. Let's see here. Transitions design. It kind of got off the page. Yeah, we can see you're not in presenter view, though. Now I am. There we go. All right. So I'm going to talk about different ways that you can uh, become a military officer and get college paid for. OK, um, there's a number of different programs. I'm going to specifically talk today about the five federal service academies and ROTC. Um, so before I do that, uh, let's see, Theodore and Connor, uh, is there a particular interest that either of you have? I've already talked to the other students. So what I mean, ROTC or one of the academies? Uh, the Air Force Academy. OK. Theodore? Uh, yeah, one of the, either like Academy or ROTC. All right, either one. All right, perfect. Well, let's get started. So there's five federal service academies, Air Force, West Point, Navy, Coast Guard, and the Merchant Marine Academy. And I'll talk about all of these. Starting on the one that's more closely um, geographically located near us, and that's the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, the Air Force is one of the big three. And when I talk about the big three academies, I'm talking about Air Force, West Point, and Annapolis. The other two, Coast Guard and Merchant Marine, are academies, but they're smaller in size. And so I'll talk about them last. Um, I mentioned Air Force is the only one located on the West Coast. Uh, all of the big three academies have roughly 30 majors or so across all types of, 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 of curriculum. So you want to major in English or math or science 
or history or economics, you can generally have that option at one of the big three academies. The nice thing about the big three, um, I say big three, there's roughly 4,000 students there. Um, they play division one at the division one sports level, a huge number of clubs and programs, and extracurricular activities you can engage in. When I was at the academy, uh, I graduated from the Air Force Academy myself. I went to the free fall parachute program. I sailed in a, in a, a single, uh, in a soaring airplane. I, I soloed in a, a single engine Cessna. Um, when I graduated, I uh, got accepted into the special agent program. And my job for seven years while I was on active duty was a special agent for the Air Force, uh, kind of like the Air Force's FBI. Uh, it's just one of the many career opportunities uh, that the Air Force offers, just like Navy and, and Army offers a lot of different career opportunities as well. The number one career choice at the Air Force Academy, as you might expect, is to be a pilot. And so roughly 42% of the graduates go on to pilot training. Um, I mentioned that it, there, it is a Division I sports program. I don't know if any of the students here on this call are, uh, are varsity athletes, but um, you probably know how competitive Division I sports are. And just because it's academy doesn't mean it's any less competitive. Um, all the academies have won numerous uh, uh, awards in sports. Um, uh, Air Force is in both the WAC and the Mountain West Conference. They've got championships in a number of different sports and all of those. Same with Navy and West Point. Um, but uh, a number of options. Uh, these are just highlighting a few here on this page. Uh, the next one, let's go all the way out east because that's where the other four Federal Service Academies are. Annapolis, Maryland is where you'll find the United States Naval Academy. And they are the second oldest academy founded in 1845. Uh, they've had one president graduate and serve. Uh, Jimmy Carter uh, was a Naval Academy graduate. They've had close to 50 Rhodes Scholars. If anyone knows anything about being a Rhodes Scholar, it's very competitive. And Navy has, has a lot of them. They've also had 54 astronauts serve, uh, more than Air Force. Um, of course, they've been around uh, a lot, a lot uh, longer, over 100 years longer. Um, but again, uh, close to 30 majors at the Naval Academy, a number of different minors, most of them in foreign languages. Um, they, if you don't play, you have to play a sport at one of the academies. And so if you don't play a varsity sport, you can play intramurals or you can play a club level sport, but playing a sport is mandatory. And, and I'll get into a little bit more of that. West Point, uh, upstate New York, almost upstate New York, kind of midway, um, is the uh, United States Military Academy, West Point. Uh, it is the oldest federal service academy, founded in 1802. They have had two presidents, Grant and Eisenhower, three, if you count Jefferson Davis, who led the Confederacy. Um, they have had astronauts serve uh, and who've graduated from the Military Academy and 83 Medal of Honor recipients. You think about, uh, you know, being in the Army, uh, a lot of close hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, big opportunity, if you want to call it that, to, to, uh, to fight. And, uh, and uh, you can imagine how many people have, been, have earned that award and, and over 70 uh, Rhodes Scholar athletes as well. Again, a number of, of, of options for majors. Um, and I always look at the academies, the big three is, you know, figuring out what branch of service you might want to serve in. Um, maybe you're more geared towards wanting to be on a ship or maybe, you know, uh, flight line and Air Force and Space Force type stuff will gear geared you towards attending the Air Force Academy. But that's how I would recommend you thinking about which academies to apply to. There are two more academies that um, are a little bit different. They're about a quarter of the size of the big three. The first one we'll talk about is Kings Point. That's the Merchant Marine Academy, uh, founded in 1938, sits on Walter Cronkite's estate there right across from, from Manhattan. It is not part of the Department of Defense. It's part of the Department of Transportation. There are fewer majors at Kings Point and at the Coast Guard Academy, five at Kings Point. Um, all of them are in the STEM field, so science and, and engineering and math related. Uh, the smaller of the two academies are Division Three sports programs, still highly competitive. So for any of you athletes who play varsity sports, you probably are aware how competitive 
playing in colleges. Just because it's D3 doesn't mean it's competitive. There are a couple of things that I really like about the Merchant Marine Academy. One is that you get to spend a full year at sea, training, still studying for school, but a full year. So it really splits up the time that you would typically spend at a university on campus. The other interesting thing is, one, uh, you don't have to serve active duty when you graduate. You could actually earn a reserve commission in the Navy, and you get your Coast Guard license, and you go spend your required amount of time in the Merchant Marines. Or if you decided that you want to go on active duty, the greatest option about the Merchant Marine Academy is you can go into any branch of service. Easy. You just tell them which one you go in, and you can go into it. So it's a, it's a wonderful program. If you haven't thought much about it, I absolutely would recommend it if you're interested in attending an academy. The last one I'll speak to is uh, the Coast Guard Academy located in New London, Connecticut. Founded in 1876, it is part of Homeland Security. Again, a smaller number of majors. They've got eight, mostly all in the STEM field. They also play in Division Three sports. Uh, two things that I like about Coast Guard Academy. You spend 10 weeks abroad twice during your, once during your junior, uh, excuse me, during your um, uh, uh, sophomore year and once during your senior year, where you're going to spend 10 weeks abroad um, on a vessel, uh, learning about the roles of, of, of what that entails. And you do not need a congressional nomination to apply to the Coast Guard Academy, where the other four you do. And so I'll talk a little bit more about Academy nominations in a moment. The greatest thing about the five Federal Service Academies, it's more than just going to school for academics. The Academy uses, and I'll talk about this in a bit, the whole person concept, education being one of those three pillars. Um, uh, uh, and uh, beyond academics, it's, it's leadership development and training. The academies are very competitive. So if you don't consider yourself to be a competitive person, I would not even bother applying to the academies. Very competitive. Uh, one of the great things about going to the academy is, one, you get your education completely paid for, but you're going to have to serve time. Um, minimum of five years. Uh, if you go on to pilot training or, or want to become a doctor or something like that, then you're going to have additional time added to your commitment. But you, when you graduate, you have a really nice high paying job that's guaranteed. There aren't many institutions that will guarantee a job when you graduate from college. I mentioned the whole person concept, academics, athletics, and character leadership development. Those are three big core parts that the academies look for. And by the way, ROTC as well. So the first pillar is academics. You gotta be a top student uh, in your high school to get into one of the academies. Uh, they're typically as, as difficult to get into as one of the Ivy League schools. So very competitive academically. Um, no matter what you major in at the academies, you're going to graduate with a Bachelor of Science. When I went to Air Force, I majored in Russian area studies and I minored in the Russian language. If I had gone to UW in that major, I would have graduated with a Bachelor of Arts. But because the academy's core foundation are STEM, you're going to graduate with a Bachelor of Science no matter what you major in. They're all consistently ranked top in the different publications uh, throughout the U.S. I've noted three here, but in terms of best overall academic experience, best student to teacher ratio, um, uh, and a number of other most satisfied uh, uh, time during college. I mean, different rankings, but I encourage you to check them out. Athletics is the second pillar um, that the academies look for in the whole person concept. And so uh, hopefully you play a sport, either in school or out of school, but you got to be physically fit. You're going to have to take a physical fitness test when you apply to the academy, and you have annual standards that you have to keep up with at the academy. And then once you graduate and you're in a particular service branch, you're going to have to take annual physical fitness test. It's important. So it's part about it's part of being an officer uh, is is being physically fit. Um, and athletics is a requirement, as I mentioned. So if you don't play a varsity sport where you're playing events against other colleges and universities, you can play a club level sport, which is as intense, or you can be invo involved in intramurals, all required at the academies. Military is the final pillar of that three, three legs. Uh, it's, it's a course. You're going to have to take a military class 
when you're at the academies. You'll learn about the honor code, not lying, not stealing, not cheating, not tolerating anyone who does those things. You learn about the structure of the service that you would represent, how to wear the uniform, the various customs and courtesies, how to march, you know, how to salute. Um, it's all about learning how to be a leader and developing good qualities of character because that's what they look for in being a military officer. The cost is zero when you go to the academy. You're on 100% full scholarship. In return for that, you're going to owe a minimum of five years. Now, depending if you, I went on and they paid for my master's degree. And so I had to owe a couple extra years when I was in. I have classmates who went on to become pilots. They served at least 10 years. I have a classmate, one of my roommates from freshman year, who was a doctor. He had a, a you know an additional service commitment. So depending on the type of job, you might have more than just the five years. But basically, what they put into you in terms of education, you're going to pay back to the to that service in terms of years served. Okay. But again, it's a guaranteed job. And let me tell you, when your peers are seniors in college that go that go to UW or Wazoo or Gonzaga or or somewhere else, they're going to be fighting and looking for jobs. You're not going to have to worry about it. It's going to be guaranteed. Okay. So the big three schools, there are about 4,000 students, roughly 1,000 per class. The smaller of the two academies, about 250 students per class. Smaller, very similar structure and the way the daily routines go. Okay. One's a little bit bigger than the other three, but then the other two, excuse me. Uh, all of the academies, with the exception of the Merchant Marine Academy, have a summer program where you can apply. So all of you are juniors. So um, it's February. Some of uh, uh, military academy, uh, Navy and Coast Guard still have their applications open for summer seminar. If you want to go to Air Force, you've missed it if you haven't applied. Um, but that's OK. It doesn't mean that you are any less of a candidate. But the, the, the summer seminar programs are an opportunity for you to go and spend a week at the academies and learn, learn what it's like. Learn what it's like to be in the shoes of a cadet or a midshipman. OK, but if you miss the opportunity, don't worry about it. If you are applying and you don't get accepted, don't worry about it. They're highly competitive, highly competitive. There are such few spots in the summer seminar program that um, uh, with so many applicants. Uh, if you do get accepted, it's a good sign. It doesn't mean that you're guaranteed an appointment because there's so many other things that go into the application process, but it's a good sign, meaning that you'll probably be very competitive. What is the admissions process? Well, it's absolutely one of the most competitive processes in any college application, more than the IVs, quite frankly, because you got to get a medical exam. You got to go through a physical fitness test. Yeah, you have an essay like a lot of schools do, but you got to apply for a congressional nomination unless you're applying to Coast Guard. And I'll talk about that. You got to sign forms like I'm not going to do drugs or if I've done drugs, here's, here's what I've done. You got to get teacher valuations. You got to get letters of recommendation. And so there's a lot of stuff that you have to go through. They all have suspenses and deadlines. So if you're applying, you got to make sure that you stay on top of these things. Start early. If you are going to one of the applying to one of the academies with the exception of Coast Guard, you're going to need a nomination. So everyone here who wants to go, you should apply to your congressperson and both senators. If you have a family member who retired from the military, then you may also qualify for a presidential nomination. There's also a vice presidential nomination, but primarily you're going to apply to your congressperson and both senators. Very, very competitive. Make sure you apply to those nominations early. You get your paperwork in. You're going to have to go through an interview process with your congressperson. I've actually chaired in. I've chaired Congresswoman Del Bene's, Congressman Kilmer's panels in the past. I've wrote their questions. So they're all very competitive. OK, the challenge with the senator's nominations is that you're competing with everyone in Washington state. With your congressperson, you're only competing against the people in your district. OK, they also won't go through an interview process at the senator's level just because there's so many people. It's very competitive to get an appointment. This is a snapshot 
of what a lot of the students' profiles look like. So take a look at it. If you've got lower than a 385, it doesn't mean that you can't be a good candidate. It just means that you better have a, a, a good resume in terms of your athletic ability or extracurricular activities if you're a little bit shy there on the GPA or the testing scores, okay? How do they differ? I always advise my students that I work with to pick the career choice that you're thinking of. So if you don't want to be on a ship, you should be applying to Coast Guard, Merchant Marine Academy, or the Naval Academy. It's that simple. If you don't like water, okay? Um, if you're thinking about flying, you know, Navy and Air Force are great options. You can even fly if you go to West Point, just not as many options, okay? Um, again, different types of careers. If you want to be in infantry, Army is your career. If you want to be in submarines or the nuclear service, Mer uh, Navy is your career. So that's kind of how I would educate you about and advise you about what academy to apply for. You can apply to more than one as well. But when you are going through the process of a nomination, you're going to have to rank order which ones you want to get into first. So do your diligence. RTC. So let me pause here because I know I had a lot of people that expressed an interest about the academies and ask if anyone's got any particular questions that I can address right now. All right, let's talk about ROTC. Everyone who's applying to the academy should also be applying to ROTC. Um, one, the academies are ultra competitive. I've seen straight A students not get appointments. It all depends on who you're competing against and what that year looks like for the academies. So you want to have a good plan B if plan A is one of the academies. Um, and plan A might be ROTC because you want to experience what a regular college life is like. And that's what ROTC is all about. It's a regular college experience with the addition of taking a class that's going to educate you about being an officer in that particular branch of service. Um, they'll have a class and they also have a lab. It's like going to chemistry where you have your chemistry class and then you have a lab. Well, your lab in ROTC is learning how to wear the uniform, learning how to salute, learning how to march, those types of things, okay? But generally it's a class that you attend three days a week, okay? When you graduate from ROTC, it's a four-year commitment, not five. Now, if you get selected to become, to go to med school or to be a pilot or something like that, then they will add on additional years of commitment, but minimum four. Scholarships are available to everyone in high school that's applying a four-year scholarship. They're also very competitive. You wanna have at least those numbers that I reflect here on the slide. Also note, if you don't get a scholarship, you can still attend that university if you get selected and join ROTC like you're joining and enrolling in any other class, okay? And if you maintain a good status and good grades, there's a high probability that they'll award you a scholarship as a sophomore or a junior or a senior. So they offer, a, 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 there are very few seniors who are in ROTC that aren't in the program under scholarship. So don't fret if you don't get a scholarship as a high school senior when you're applying, there's still opportunities. The big difference between applying to ROTC and the academies, the academies are like just applying to a normal university, it's one application. With ROTC, you got to apply to the universities that you want to attend and then separately, you apply online for that ROTC scholarship. So for example, let's say you want to you want to go to UW and maybe Wazoo and maybe Colgate and Santa Clara. You apply to all those schools and then you see which ROTC units they have at those schools. For example, UW and Wazoo have all three. Santa Clara doesn't have all three and, and others. So, so you got to check those out. But you would apply to those universities and then you can also apply to Air Force or Army or Navy or Navy that has a Marine option if that's an interest, but that's in tandem with the school applications. Here are the RTC locations in Washington State. Of note, Seattle University as an example. Um, 
only has Army ROTC there on campus. But if you're a student at Seattle University and you apply to um, Navy or Air Force ROTC, you would take those classes at the University of Washington. So there are a number of universities that have cross town relationships with nearby universities. So they're all in the system. You just go and look it up. Um, but there are over a thousand universities have ROTC programs. So pro there's a high likelihood that the university you're applying to has a program. Um, it's a very competitive process, just like the academies, except you take the medical exam only once you've been accepted um, uh, versus Air Force. You take it a little bit earlier once you've accomplished most of the application process. You don't need to apply for a nomination either, but you still got to go through a personal interview. You still got to take a physical fitness test. You still got to go through um, all the other pieces that we talked about. This is a typical profile, still very competitive, not quite as competitive as the academies, but still very competitive. And there's different types of scholarships as well. And that's one of the things that makes it maybe not as competitive. So for example, there are some scholarships that offer the equivalent of a full public school in-state education. So for example, what I mean by that is we're all Washington State residents. Um, the, the tuition that you would get as a Washington State resident for going to a public university like Wazoo or Western or University of Washington is, is uh, up to a certain amount of money. If you get that type of scholarship, then they'll apply that if you got into a school, say, in California or Oregon or Maine or somewhere like that. There are other programs where they'll offer a complete full ride. So, for example, years ago, I had a student I worked with at Bellevue High School who was a wrestler and a football player, got into West Point, and he also got a full ride at, at William & Mary. And he took the William & Mary full ride and was able to wrestle there, and 100% uh, of his school was paid for. So depending on the type of scholarship you get, it might be an, an, a, a full type of scholarship. These are some of the dates on when you would apply, so make note of them. I would recommend you get started early in the process because they're very involved, as I've explained, um, and you don't want to miss any of these dates, right? So whether it's uh, ROTC or the academies or applying for nominations, start early. Some of the um, schools have a rolling application, so you could meet multiple boards when you're going through. So just start early. You should be starting right about now, thinking about it right now. That's it. It's pretty simple. I've left my email here. Um, in addition, the website below tells you a little bit more about what we do at VSI. Um, but if you have any questions about ROTC, the academies, or just applying to colleges in general, email me. Send me a note. Happy to engage you in a conversation and answer any questions that you might have. I'd love to be a resource for you. So. Uh, let me open it up and ask if anyone's got any questions right now. Please go ahead. So you said that um, a congressional recommendation is required for the service academies, but uh, my initial understanding was that you can still apply if you don't get the uh, recommendation. It's just that your chances of going are incredibly low. No. Is that correct? It is not correct. So you have to have a nomination to be considered for an appointment. If you do not have a nomination, you will not get an appointment. It's as simple as that. Coast Guard does not require a nomination. Sometimes there are, are what we'll call shell games. So for example, if you don't get one by your congressman or senator, but maybe they can find one from the superintendent of each academy can give so many out. Um, but you will not go to an academy unless you have a nomination. What else? Um, so our school has a, a, a program, or I think it's just the whole district, where uh, you can, uh, if you have a, a bad grade, you can correct it to a P, but it shows up on your transcript. Uh, like, uh, do, you, do you think the uh, academies will uh, be uh, accepting of these Ps, or? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the P is for pass, right? So yeah, they will. 
they will certainly. Um, it also depends on the type of class. You know, in general, they want to know what your overall GPA is. They might get into some specifics about certain classes that maybe you took a P on, you know, pass fail instead of the GPA. But in general, they want to look at your, your overall GPA. So for academies, you really should have a three, five or better. I mean, and, and you saw the profile that I listed. If you want to be competitive, really, truly competitive, you got to be in the three, seven, five, three, eight, five range. If you don't have it, don't worry. Uh, talk to me and let me let me get a feel for how you are on all the other attributes and characteristics that the academies look like. And I'll give you my honest opinion on whether I think you'd be competitive or not. It doesn't hurt to apply. Every year is different. I've seen 4-0 students not get in. I've seen students with a 3-4 get in. OK, maybe they had to go to one of the prep schools ahead of time, which you can't apply to directly. Air Force, West Point and, and Annapolis have prep schools. I went to the Air Force Academy prep school. I took a weird route. I wouldn't recommend this to anyone. I enlisted in the Air Force right out of high school. Didn't want to go to college right away. Grew up in Florida. They sent me to Alaska. When I was in Alaska, I suddenly grew up I was by myself. I needed to. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. And then I realized I wanted to be an officer. I didn't want to be enlisted. I applied to the academy. They sent me to the prep school. Then I went for a year. Then I went to the academy my four years. And then I was an officer, just like everyone else who got in right out of high school. So there are ways to do it. Let's chat if you have questions. What else?